outside shape of Christianity, but in but it's actually not Christianity. So this is a possibility, right? Powers of the old world. This second beast will reinforce the systems created by the first beast, and will cause the world to worship the first beast, and will enforce the mark of the beast. So what is this mark? Many have tried to assign numbers to <coughs> alphabets in different languages and find names of human individuals whose names might add up to 666. But the Bible never tells us to do this, nor does it tell us what language the name of the beast is in. Rather, the numbers have a symbolic value. First, the numbers 6 and 60 are strongly tied to Babylonian culture and religion, and John makes it clear in Revelation 17 that the beast power is a spiritual continuation of Babylon, the kingdom that rebels against God and terrorizes people. So this now, remember, this is very, very important. Uh, the number 666, if you even do um, a search on the number 6, the literal 666 on the Bible, you will see that it's attached to, uh, one of the uh, search results shows that it's attached to the people of Babylon, okay? Um, so this kind of like, the, this chaos that we're going through right now, right? It'll get merged to this kind of like beast. Um, and so, Allahu A'lam, Allah knows best, but this is where it seems like things may be going. Secondly, the number six is just short of the number closely associated with God, seven. The number seven is the number that marks God as the unique divine creator who made the world in the seven days of creation. 666 is the number of man, or humanity, because it represents falling short of God's perfection and glory. It's a symbol of humanity refusing to step into the fullness of God's goodness, and instead falling short and failing to live up to God's expectations. The great kingdoms that John describes in Revelation have done and will do exactly this. Revelation 13 tells us that God sees the violence and suffering that human political powers inflict upon this world. It reminds us that the suffering in this world does not come from God, but from the people using their power in evil ways. It reminds people who believe in God to be patient and endure, in hopes that God will complete his mission, that Jesus will return and bring justice and judgment against these powerful kingdoms and their evil rulers. Therefore, rejoice. As uh, Dr. Umar said in one of his interviews, which I haven't uploaded yet, but in one of his interviews he says, the word Masih indicates the coming of God's judgment. Um, so this fits in very well again with that. Okay, so the word 666 or the, the number 666 uh, is tied to Babylon. It also is tied to the idea that where man be makes himself God and becomes godless. So this godless society where the number 7 represents godliness, number 6 represents godlessness. And so when this godless society is everywhere, on its forehead is written kufr. This is, a, it, it's completely denied Allah in every shape and form. In terms of being close to nature, it has changed our food, it has changed our habits, it's changed our lifestyle. We are surrounded by fake things like technology. You know, it is, it, it is a world that says we, uh, as long as we have, we don't need God, right? We, we have our, we need our, we don't need the boundaries of God, we need our liberty in every single shape and form, right? And uh, you don't, a, a male can marry a male, a female can marry a female, so God's order has completely been disrupted. And the other word for that is kufr, okay? So this is very interesting. Now let's watch uh, another uh, clip. we meet two beasts and one is the beast from the sea and one is the beast from the land now we need to remember that revelation is apocalyptic imagery now the beast from the sea as you know from the previous lecture but one of its possible interpretations which is the beast that rule that has its throne on the sea is shaitan iblis and who is the beast on earth is the jal so this kind of like relationship is also possible, Allahu A'lam. Again, these are all metaphorical things. No one can say 100%, right? This is not part of our 
uh, imaniyat uh, as such. This is a matter of interpretation. So this is one possible interpretation. Allahu alam. It's an apocalyptic book that uses apocalyptic imagery. And so when we see a beast in Revelation, we should ask, what is that representing? And one of the best things to do when reading Revelation is to consider possible Old Testament backgrounds. And that helps us here. If we turn to the book of Daniel, chapter 7, a book that has quite a bit of similarity to Revelation in a number of ways, we find different kingdoms represented by different beasts. And this sort of imagery is in the background of the beast in Revelation 13, the beast from the sea. And so this beast from the sea would fill God's people with trepidation, uh, but, but the way that John describes it is going to be in a way that's going to encourage the church. We also meet a beast from the land, and it's again helpful to remember the, the associations of kingdoms with beasts here, uh, but the beast from the land is promoting the beast from the sea, and we find elsewhere that this beast from the land so over here, what I wanted to uh, share with you is that the, the beast of the land, meaning the Jal, is promoting the beast of the sea, meaning Iblis. This is one possible interpretation. I'm not saying, because if you take the normal Christian interpretation, this is not the interpretation at all. And their interpretation within the Bible has a lot of uh, validity, you can say also. But the other thing I wanted to show with you, show with one common element between the, the Islamic scriptures and Christianity is that the idea of 666, meaning ungodliness, uh, is the same as the idea of kufr. And so 666 will be on the forehead, and kufr will be on the forehead. This is a common point between the two. It's, it's very important, uh, you know, to use the help of people like Dr. Omar Zaid to understand some of these things a little bit more deeply, which I will be doing, inshallah, uh, shortly. Um, and so the beast from the land may be some sort of religious uh, influence that promotes worship of the beast from the sea. Uh, in a way that would be deceitful, and in a way that would... Tr so the, the, the beast of the land promotes the worship of the ibadah of shaitan himself. Uh, so this is one way to look at it, okay? Um, so we will, inshallah, end here as far as uh, the Arrivals uh, series is concerned for today. Um, and this is like the beginning of the part of the uh, number four. But so I wanted to discuss uh, the Islamic perspective on 666 and its relationship with the word kufr. And that you will not be able to buy or sell without his mark. Meaning what? Now, uh, let me actually show you a few parts of the uh, Bible. Okay. Um, let me show you a few parts of the Bible. So this is uh, Revelation 13, where it says, uh, you know, they will not, and here, the, him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man. The number, his number is six hundred, six score and six. And the verse before that says, and no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark. Okay. You will not be able to buy or sell except you will be doing something kufr. You will be, uh, the whole commerce, the whole capitalistic society, the whole consumer society, this whole consumer system, the system of consumerism, the whole system of economics, the, the paper money, the paper money, all of it will be built upon kufr, which will be denial of Allah's system, denial of gold and silver, replaced by something other than the order that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. And so this is uh, one possible interpretation of this, this whole passage of the Bible and how it relates to other passages, passages of the Bible. So if somebody wants to do more research, more thought, uh, you know, please share that in your comment section. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now as for the uh, the part of uh, that I usually do for a few minutes at the end, uh, as far as uh, spirituality is concerned. Again, uh, when we are uh, dealing with this, and Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. I want everyone to think today and to say 40 times Alhamdulillah, 
على نعمة الإسلام الحمد لله for the نعمة of Islam because Islam is the greatest uh, blessing the greatest نعمة that we have this type of knowledge this type of understanding and all we have to do is you know we can act upon it now if we don't have the knowledge we can't act upon it but if we have the knowledge Allah allows us inshallah to act upon it so I want everyone to thank Allah for the blessings of Islam for the blessings of Quran for this type, this knowledge of the sacred for the blessings of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin ar-rahman ar-rahim who out of his mercy ar-rahman wa'allam al-quran right so i want you to think where you would be today if you didn't have islam so with this idea i want you to praise allah and i want you to thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his hamd and his shukr right uh, that you have the ni'mah of Islam. So we'll do, you know, we'll say Alhamdulillah, 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 Alhamdulillah. So next time you pray, inshallah, remember that how much gratitude we owe Allah subhanahu wa taala for this type of knowing and this sacred knowledge and this understanding. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in our understanding, in our foresight, in our basira, in our nur, in our understanding, and protect us from a'udhu billahi an akuna aw an nakuna min al jahileen. We seek Allah's refuge from being amongst the jahileen. So the ni'mah of Islam is a great ni'mah, alhamdulillah. This was a very, very amazing video. I'm trying to put in a word before my camera goes off because it's low. Um, this was very amazing. I like how he was saying these books are um, sometimes written with using figurative language. Other than that, even if we want to interpret things, no one, not me, not him, not um, anyone else in the world can interpret something a hundred percent like i'm sure hundred percent no one can